cool. So this call will be recorded. So we're going to go into the harmonic scanner, guys. The harmonic scanner is a product that is exclusive to our markets live. And you need to understand what it's trying to do to be able to really understand how to maximize its potential. Uh, this was the first product that I began to use when I joined our markets live. Um, I kind of jumped out there without really too, too much education. Like I, I tapped into the academy a little bit. I watched a little bit of IMLTV, but I wanted to get out there in the market. And then I, I jumped out and I really started to use the harmonic scanner in the beginning. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. We're going to just go over pretty much my own strategy, look at a few charts. Um, I'm definitely looking at all questions in the group chat. So if I'm going too fast, let me know. But this call is going to be recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube later tonight. And I'll make sure that uh, Miss Camille will send it out to everybody so you can see everything. But we're going to go into this harmonic scanner today and see what's going on in these charts. Um, I haven't even really looked at any charts yet. I'm just going to break down to you guys what it is that I'm looking for when I'm entering a trade from the harmonic scanner. And um, pretty much some of the things that how I do my take profits, how I do my stop loss. Um, it's not, you got to understand, this is a computerized software. And I'll, although it is amazing, there's nothing on earth that's just perfect. That's just going to be a walk-in gimme. You're going to have to add your own human analysis on it to be able to maximize this potential. You understand? So I want to make sure that everybody just kind of gets uh, some of the basic, basic, basic things that you're looking for when you're using the scanner. Um, I'm sorry, my computer screen is going to be a little slow, but it's okay. I'm going to get this thing rocking and rolling. All right, so first of all, um, I like to use the harmonic scanner on the uh, on the trading view site. I'll just go to imlharmonicscanner.com and log in that way. Um, I also can use the MetaTrader 4 version, but I think this one is a little bit clearer, and I like to be able to, uh, to use my indicators how I like them, so I use it on the imlharmonicscanner.com platform. Um, what it pretty much is doing for those, I'm going to go through this as if you guys don't even know what it is, so that way you can really, really have an understanding. Um, over here to your left, you see six different brokers. These are all different brokers. These are pretty much the most popular brokers that individuals use um, when trading. So you can go through each broker, and what you're looking for is uh, you click on the broker, you go to scan for trade, you see scan for 15 minute or scan for H1, H4, and D1. And what that means is that these are trades, uh, these are our potential trade setups that the harmonic scanner is giving you. So you scan for M15, these are setups to where each candlestick is 15 minutes. So my expectancy on when I'm expecting the move to happen that I'm looking for is based off of what kind of chart that I'm looking at. If I'm looking at a move on the 15 minute chart, I'm gonna be expecting it to happen a little bit faster than I would be if I was looking at it on the H4 chart. So you need to know exactly what you're doing beforehand. Cause I see people that jump in charts on, on the day chart and they're mad they don't have pips in 20 minutes. And you gotta just understand that that's unrealistic. You need to know uh, what it is that you're looking for when you're going to each of these uh, charts. I personally, I use JAFX, Trader's Way, and then another broker called FX Glory. So those are the brokers that I look for when I'm going to the harmonic scanner. So I will go to the harmonic scanner.com. I'm gonna go to um, M15. And let's see what we can find here. Um, uh, you see here that uh, they have the pair and then what kind of pattern is next to it. If you go to the academy, the academy has a breakdown for each which one of these patterns uh, means. Um, I'm not gonna get into too, too much detail. I'll just tell you guys some of my favorite patterns. One, I do stay away from sharks because uh, sharks are a pattern that really, really constantly retests. So a lot of times you'll get into a trade with a shark and you'll be in some profit for a little bit, maybe 10, 15 pips, and then you're back into the negative for 10, 15 pips, and it kind of does a little bit of consolidation. It does work, it does make its move, but I'm not a big fan of the shark strategy. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of the bats and the Gartleys. I've had a lot of success trading with them, um, but I do stay away from the sharks. Um, GJ is my favorite pair, so I'm gonna click on GJ first with a little bit of bias, but we're gonna go here and see what's going on with GJ. Um, mm, so let's take a look. Now, um, for those who are unaware, you can see that I have um, Bollinger Bands already set on here. If you don't know how to do that, right here at the top in the middle, you'll see uh, this button here is for the indicators. So you can come here and type in whatever indicator it is that you wanna to add to it. The indicators that I use, I use the Bollinger Bands, your RSI should already be on there, and then I use the Stochastic, okay? So I'm looking at all three of these, you can type them in literally right here, boom, Bollinger Bands, click it, and it'll come up on your chart. The goal was for you to get off of this training and be able to fish for your own trades all week, okay? That's what I'm trying to accomplish. I want somebody who don't know anything about the harmonic scanner to in the next 30 minutes be able to understand what they're looking for when they go into it, okay? And yes, this is gonna be recorded, and I'll make sure that um, I get that out to the team. Thank you all for joining. I see a question on here. Do you only look at the brokers that you use? Yeah, honestly, um, I only look at the brokers that I, that I use and there's, uh, there's usually enough on there for me to find something. So I'm 100% I'm looking for um, the brokers that I use. Um, these are the most popular ones anyway. So IML kind of pushes JFX traders way um, and, and a couple of you like that. I don't really see anybody with hot Forex or anything like that. Maybe FX choice, but for the most part, you see JFX because everybody loves trading cryptos and uh, traders way is a very popular one as well. 
I'm keeping the chat box open so you got questions. Um, which one is FX Glory? FX Glory is not on this one. Um, okay, but now uh, the first thing you guys need to look at when, when you're um, when you pull up a trade, you need to understand if it's an old trade or if it's not an old trade because a lot of times they don't clean the scanner out. So once the trade has completed the pattern that it's looking for, it can still sit up there for another day. So I've seen people get into trades that if the move has already happened and taken place, and you're still fishing for a trade, and you're just really guessing at this point. I'm, I only like I only get into trades that I think are a one. I'm not fishing. I, I want. I mean, I'm not like like hunting to where I'm jumping into any trade because I want to want to make some money so bad. You got to realize I'm more of a sniper with mine. I'm not trying to, 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 to go on the front line of the battle and shoot at everybody. Like I want to take precision shots and, and really, really invest heavily onto the shots that I take. So that way what, I, I'm expecting them to be accurate. So I'm able to really, really capitalize on what I'm doing. Um, hold on, questions. Say, can you use any broker or just the one? The brokers are all right here. So you can look here. Uh, she said, not sure if I missed the trade or this is an old trade. Now, look. When I get into, I'm looking at this one right here. When, when I determine an old trade, if a trade, I'm only a take profit one guy. I'm a conservative trader because I'm a sniper with it and I'm going to use a little bit of a heavier lot size on a trade because I'm not going to wait two days for it to go hit TP3. I, I'd rather get in my trade, get out of TP1 and be done with it with 20 to 30 pips. If you can get 20 to 30 pips two or three times a day, you ain't got to go to work for anybody if you can do that accurately and consistently. So that, that's pretty much how I trade. Listen, you can trade however you want to. I'm going to describe to you guys my style. You can do what it is that you please. Now, what I'm looking for when I'm using the harmonic scanner, I use the Bollinger Bands because it's letting you know it's kind of like a, in a way, like a kind of like a boomerang kind of tactic. Like when it pops out of the Bollinger Band, you, uh, you're you aware that it's not 100%, but it's pretty much at some point in time, I'm going to have to go back into it. And that's really what I'm looking to enter. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see this clearly. Now, this is GBP JPY on the 15 minute for JAFX broker. Um, Right now, I wouldn't be looking to get into this trade. We're going to pretty much do some back testing, and I'm going to explain my strategy. Now, the harmonic scanner, uh, for the basic people, for guys who don't really know much about it, this green line is where the, technically you're supposed to enter the trade immediately. And when it hits the green line, your blue line is your take profit, and your red line is your stop loss. You know it's a buy because your take profit is above your entry. It will be a sell if your take profit was below your entry. So just make sure that everybody's clear on that. Um, I've seen people make mistakes as far as what's a buy, what's a sell, that kind of stuff. But Make sure that you know exactly if it's a buy or a sell. So this is a buy. Now, I want to get into the trade around this region. But what I'm specifically looking for, I'm waiting for a, uh, a candlestick to pop out of the Bollinger Band. Hold on. One second. So I got a slow laptop. Um, but I'm waiting for a trade to bust out of the Bollinger Band like you see right here. And then I'm not entering the trade until I see a candlestick go in my direction and close inside of the Bollinger Band. Now, listen, close and go inside are not the same thing. I see people, it'll come out the Bollinger Band and then a wick will go up and you're jumping in the trade. And now you're in there way too early. Guys, entry points are so critical with trading. I will wait an extra two, three, four hours for the entry point that I'm looking for before I get into a trade too early. I'd rather be looking at a trade that I wish I got into than being in the trade and wishing I was out. So like, it's, it's so much better to just wait. And, and the patience that, that's required to be a successful trader is extreme. And you need to be able to, to, to understand that. So I'm waiting for the, uh, the, the pair to bust out of the Bollinger Band. So here, boom, it's out. Now I'm looking for a potential trade. I'm not jumping in it because it came out. No, because it can still keep coming down. I'm waiting for a candle to close inside of the Bollinger Band. And that's what I'm really signaling for me for my entry. Now, the other indicators that I use I use the RSI and the stochastic. So when I'm using these tools, uh, pretty much, hold on, let me get this out the way. Uh, pretty much, when I'm looking at the RSI, I want my RSI to be at or uh, at or below 30. So I'm looking at it to be literally below this dotted line right here. It makes it so easy for you because you, you can't make a mistake. That, that's so easy. You need. To, I'm, not, I'm looking for a buy. I'm not buying it unless my RSI is under 30. Even if my, I'm looking for all three of my confirmation to be 100%. Again, I'm a sniper. I'm not guessing. I'm not gambling. This is educated investing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm putting my money seriously to something that I believe is going to happen. I'm not guessing. I'm hoping and praying. When I first started this, I used to do a whole lot of guessing, hoping, praying, staring at trades, praying it was going to turn around. I'm not doing any of that anymore because I, I want to be confident in what I'm doing because I'm, I'm not trying to trade with the, with the point on one lot side. So do I use this strategy for all patterns? Pretty much. I stay away from the sharks, but everything else pretty much is good. But um, when I am, I'm not getting into a trade unless it meets all three of my confirmations. So I needed to be busting out of the Bollinger Band with one closing. I need my RSI to be at or below 30. 
and I need my stochastic to be at or below 25. And this is for a buy. So if it was for a sell, it will be the exact opposite. I would need my RSI at or above 70 and my stochastic at or above 75. Um, let me get a one in the chat box if you understand the three confirmations that I'm describing right now. Let me get a one in the chat box before we move on. Please. Just so we, we're clear. I don't want to, it's a lot of people on here and I don't know how advanced everybody is and I want to make sure that you're getting it. Somebody said they don't understand. Danielle. Okay, Danielle. Um, the three, you're looking for three confirmations. You go to the indicators right here. You click on it. You uh, bring up your Bollinger Bands. Your RSI will already be on there. You bring up your stochastic. I'm not entering a trade unless price is below at or below 30, like right here where I'm at, like see my mouse is right here, the same spot that price is right at this point when this Bollinger Band, uh, when this um, candlestick closed inside the Bollinger Band and at the same point to where the stochastic is below 25. So that's three confirmations right then and there that I'm looking for, you, like that, you understand me? Now, how I do my stop loss and take profits, things of that nature, so I'm looking for this point. Once I see this close above this line and I've already gotten my RSI below here and my stochastic, boom, I'm, I'm entering the trade. Now, again, I'm a conservative trader. This thing could very easily go to TP3 eventually, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for price to 100% hit this red line right here. I, I twin trade, by the way. Twin trading meaning I enter two entries when I get into a trade. So I'm putting in, if I'm going to buy this at this moment, this time right here, I'm buying GBP, JPY twice. I buy it twice. I'm going to make my first take profit at this red line right here in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. So that way I'm securing my profits. I will take... The, the, the 8 to 12, the 15 pips, or, or whatever this is. Hold on, I can, all I can see is you guys' faces. Make sure I can see my, uh, my pips. Let me count y'all. So if I'm going to enter a trade right here around this point, let's say this 1.46.37, let's say. Let's say 37. And then the red line's right here. We're looking at 1.4663. You're looking at about 30 pips. Again, if you can lock up 30 pips for sure, I'm taking that over a potential 100 pip move all day. I don't, I don't want potential. I want done deals and, and securing the bag. So I'm trying to lock up profits 100%. So if I'm going to enter this trade right here. I'm looking to get out. I have two, two trades. One is going to be at the red line, and then the other one's going to be at TP1. So I wait, I'm, I'm, I'm confident a lot of times that these trades, once with these confirmations, will hit take profit one. I'm not saying they're not going to go to TP3. I'm saying Dante Jonathan Lewis ain't going to wait for it. I'm cool with take profit one. You don't have to do that. I'm just explaining to you how I secure the bag without having to be stressing out, trying to make sure, you know what I mean, slide my stop loss up and blah, 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 and ride it out. Like, you can do all of that. I'm not saying it doesn't work. All I'm saying is I'll take mine and secure my profits. You're never going to go broke taking profit, not ever, I promise you, okay? So I'm looking, I would enter this trade right around this region. As soon as it closed inside this Bollinger Band, rolled it up for these pips right here. Listen, if you can't count pips yet, you can use this tool right here. It's called, um, I don't even know what it's called, but uh, you can click it. It's long position means buy. And if I were to go here, short position means sell. This is a buy. So I'm looking for a long position. Boom. I click long. Come here. Um, I click around the region that I would have entered it. Around this region. Now you go to settings up here. And you can literally type in the entry point and it'll tell you how many pips uh, difference is. So my entry point was one point. Four, six, let's say 146.31. And my take profit was at, let's go find take profit at the red line. The red line is like right here. So my take profit is about 146.65. Type in your take profit right here. See right here, it says profit level. Profit level, boom, 6.5. Now, it's telling you guys, you got to understand, this isn't 340 pips, this is 34. You get rid of that last zero, that's the pipette. So that would have been 34 pips in the bag from this move. This is GJ on the 15-minute chart. I entered right here, one, two, three, four candles, waited, so that's an hour to get 30 pips for a lock. It doesn't get no better than that. It didn't come with any drawdown, and that's a lock up for a deal. If I got a standard lot size on that, that's $300. I used to serve tables all day and night to barely make $150 when I left. So to think that I can get $300 from one move just like this from analyzing this chart, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, I don't jump into every trade. I'm looking for these confirmations. So you're going to have to scroll through maybe 10, 15 charts before you get to a setup that's this clean. But that's okay. I'll spend an hour looking through the charts to find the one that I'm looking for, okay? That's the thing. We get so impatient, guys. Everybody wants 
guarantees. Okay, I want to just enter a trade and get a guaranteed win. That's not how it works. You got to go hunt for yours. You got to go find your food before you eat it. And this is an opportunity for you to go get yours. And with this tool, IML, like nobody, no other Forex traders have access to something like this. And people in IML, we just want handouts all the time when you can go get it yourself using the system that IML has for you and nobody is utilizing it to its maximum potential. So I think that this is a very, very easy way to trade. So again, I would have entered the trade Got in with uh, with two entries. Had one entry at take profit one uh, to take profit one, take profit one, and then the other one would have been to um to the, the middle of the red line, and I'd have been a done deal. Um, we get we get told a lot of the times that we want to risk about one to three percent of your account. Listen, if you're trading with a hundred dollar account, it's gonna take you a long time risking one percent to see the kind of profits that you want to see. But that's because we're taking moves that really aren't um necessarily good moves and you don't really understand you need to know exactly going into it what am i risking so if i know i have a 34 pip take profit i'll edit my stop loss to what i'm willing to risk to make 30 uh 34 pips for me i like a two to one risk maybe one to one sometimes but i'm cool with two to one risk so at that point i know my take profit is 34 pips away so i'm looking for a stop loss about 17 pips i don't care what the scanner said the scanner's not in control of my account i'm in control of my account so i know i'm going to either lose 17 pips or make 34 pips. There's no if, ands, or buts when I put into this trade. A lot of people put in trades and you're worrying and you're stressing. If I do the research before I enter the trade, what am I stressing about? I already know what's gonna happen. Only two things can happen. It's gonna hit my take loss, my stop loss, or hit my take profit. And because your take profits aren't 200, 300 pips away, these are things that shouldn't be happening to tomorrow or three, four days from now. These are things that can happen almost, not immediately, but like in the next couple of hours. Like usually I like to trade the Hermana Scanner during the New York session. So I get on New York session. I'm from Philly, so I'm 9 p.m., uh, 9 a.m. Eastern. I'll jump on the scanner at 9 a.m. from 10, and I'm just looking for trades to get into that are going to play out during that session. If I'm going to get up during London, London is like from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m., I'll get up at 2, look at the scanner for about an hour, find a couple of trades that I like, and enter the trades and let them play out during the session. I'm not trying to be in a trade for three, four days. I'm not saying it doesn't work, guys. I'm some of the best traders I know are swing traders and position traders. But y'all don't got the patience for that. I didn't say, I've been trying to, I've been working with people for almost a year now and I, I teach people swing trading strategies and you're having a heart attack with, with 20 pips of drawdown. You can't have no heart attack trying to be a long-term position trader over a little bit of drawdown. It's going to happen. So the best way to prevent that is to try to enter with as minimal drawdown as possible. And you do that by perfectly timing your entry points. Um, does anybody have, well, I see 16 uh, questions. I'm sorry, I've been ignoring y'all. I didn't see these chats. Let me read these real fast. Um, can you say the RSI and the stochastic numbers again for a buy? Okay, for the RSI, I'm looking for the buy. If I'm looking for a buy, I need the RSI to be at or below 30. Meaning, if it's at 33, that's not good enough. So don't like don't get into a trade too early because it's close. Wait for your confirmation. If I'm looking for the Bollinger Band to close inside, so you can watch the replay. I'm sorry, I, I, I speak really fast, especially when I get passionate. Um, so if I'm looking for a buy, I need the RSI to be at or below 30. And I, if I'm looking for the Bollinger Band to close in, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the candlestick to close inside of the Bollinger Band, I'm not going to enter until that candle closes. I don't care if it's been in the Bollinger Band the entirety of that candlestick. If it closes outside of it, don't enter the trade. Like it's, just, it's just that simple. If you make no exceptions with your confirmations, you're going to have a lot more success. It's just that impatience and that little bit of greed because it looks like it's going to go up. It looks like it matches and you get in and then you're upset when, when it actually doesn't play out the way you thought. I'm telling you, if you wait until you see exactly what you're looking for every single time, not 60% of the time, not 80% of the time, not 99.9% .9 of the time, wait for your confirmation the entirety of the way and you'll have a lot more success trading. I promise you. Um, so let's look at another pair, see if we can find something else, see if we can find something else. And guys, this is Sunday night, so there's not a whole lot of, um, the, the movement, the markets have just opened, there's not a whole lot of movement, so I'm not looking to enter a trade tonight. Um, I'll be waiting really until tomorrow morning. I just kind of want to go over y'all my strategy and, and what I'm looking for, so that way um, you guys can know what to do this week. Um, hold on, I saw some more questions in the chat, hold on, I saw some more questions in the chat. Um... And is being inside the Bollinger Band mean between red and blue? The Bollinger Band is, hold on, get this out of here. Right, hold the Bollinger Band are these blue lines right here. This line right here and this line up here are Bollinger Bands. So at this moment, when you see price break out of the Bollinger Band, I'm not looking to enter yet. I'm not entering this trade until this candlestick right here 
closes inside, meaning closes, that means the next one has begun. So you know exactly what this candle is going to do. So that is entering when I say closing inside of the Bollinger Band. Okay, cool. Um, I see some more questions. Make sure I don't want to skip over anybody. Um, and it works the same way with buys and sells, guys. That's the strategy. And that works on any time frame. It works pretty much during any time of the day. Um, he said, Brendan Nixon, when the candles have moved far away from the bat formation, what do you do about the entry information? Do you still consider, do you still consider the entry information if the candles have moved several candles away? Again, I'm looking for, um, thank y'all for answering a couple of questions that are in there. Um, I'm looking for it to be, if the trade has already hit take profit one from a point where it was outside of the Bollinger Band near the entry point, I'm done. I'm not looking at it. I'll go right to the next one. <clears throat> the green line is the entry point, uh, Ruth. Um, to be more clear, the first red candle fully closed inside where you enter. No, the first blue candle that closed inside. I need it to be going my direction. If I'm looking for a buy, I need a blue candle to close in here. So this one that closed, I would have entered on this red candle right here, been in three to five pips of drawdown, and then right to profit. And then right to take profit one, and right to my take profit two, and I'd have been done. I'd have had the first take profit was 30 pips. So from right here to right here, that's about another 15 pips. I'd have had a 30 pip move and a 45 pip move in the bag, 70 something pips off of literally the harmonic scanner with a simple trade. So you want to catch trades when they're in this D region and just wait for your perfect entries. Um, let's see if we can find another chart. Let's see if we can find another chart. All right. So I'm, let's do an H1. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Again, guys, I don't like to trade shark patterns, so I'm not going to look at any because that's really not my game. Um, let's see. Let's see. As GJ again, again, guys, you'll see sometimes you'll see patterns that are on the 15 minute and on the hour chart. So you'll um, just more confirmation. Let's see what this guy's looking like. <sighs> see, I already don't like this trade. Um, why I don't like it? It's just not not a lot of movement. It's not a lot of. It's just too tight. It's really really scrunched up. Um, but again, the strategy still works. Um, if I was right here looking for D, price bust out of the Bollinger Band. I would not have entered this trade until this candle closed inside of the Bollinger Band. So I would have entered right here. Again, my first take profit would have been right here at TP1. That's really not even worth the time. But I would have took it to this red line for sure. I'm looking at this red line in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. And I would have bagged up from about right here. I'm sorry, right here. 1.072 to about... 0.073. That's almost, that's like 70, 80 pips right there of one. This again, this is simple stuff. Bust out the Bollinger Band, closes inside the Bollinger Band, pretty much enter. Right here, you see prices below your stochastic. Your RSI is not close enough. So if you're going to be super strict about it, I, I might not have entered this trade. Again, I told you I didn't really like it, but the strategy pretty much works. But this wasn't a trade that I would have been looking at at Juicy and, and trying to really, really get into. I'd have pretty much kept looking. I just, I told you I didn't like it from the beginning, and the strategy still works. No, well, so let's just keep doing some back testing. Let's keep doing some back testing. Um, again, I like trades on the 15 minute better because I like quicker moves. Uh, again, I like to be in and out. I'm not trying to be floating around in the markets, potentially letting the markets get me. They out to get y'all. Listen, they don't want y'all to win. There's the the people who who are in control of all of this. They don't want people to be able to do what individuals in our markets lab are doing consistently. But you can't let them take advantage of you. Again. This is a really, really tight one right here, but I don't mind it. It has a pretty nice range. This is, looks like a pretty good trade, honestly, coming up soon. Okay. All right, so here. Hold on, I got questions. Let me answer these questions. questions. And y'all, we are going to end this call at 10 o'clock. Uh, Austin Gazi is doing the seven-figure mentorship call, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. That dude is going to be getting off. Now, are these standard indicator metrics you use in the harmonic scanner? Um, I mean, I'm using indicators, uh, Bollinger Bands, RSI, Stochastic, and then the Harmonic Scanner is bringing you all the entries. Um, so for clarification, you want one candle to pop out, preferably the next candle needs to close. It doesn't have to be the next candle, Lex. Uh, it doesn't have to be the very next candle that gets right back into it. It just needs to be once that candle gets out, the next one that closes in is where I'm looking to enter. So it doesn't have to be the very next candle. Um, is this is the good time to use the scanner? When I usually look, I've missed the entries. Um, I like to look at the scanner again at the beginning of a session. So if I'm going to be trading New York session, I want to get on it between eight and 10, find some good setups, London session two and four, but anytime during a session is the best time. So can you repeat the three confirmations, Bollinger Bands, um, 
the guys, these two lines right here on the outside, you can go to indicators right up top right here, click indicators, type in Bollinger Bands, it'll come up, you add them right on there. Okay, but this is looking at like a good trade because three uh, confirmations, one confirmation, price is below um, 30 on the RSI, good. Price is also below 25 on your stochastic, good. Let's zoom in a little closer. Let's see what's up as far as this Bollinger Band, because I can't see. Get closer. And guys, you're not in a rush. Like, like I don't rush trading. It's not, if I'm not scalping, I'm not looking to snap, 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 get in, get in, get in, get in. Like, chill out. It's all right. The, the money's there. Like, once you really, like, understand trading, the, the money's there. You got to understand your own mentality and, and be patient and confident in what's going on. This one here, I will wait until I see a... Uh, one, first of all, I know somebody's going to ask, okay, look, Dante, it popped out right here and then it closed right here while you're entering the trade. I want price to be in the region of, of the entry point. Like, I'm not looking to enter the trade until it's about in the region of where the amount of scanner is looking to enter. So, like, just because it broke down here, that necessarily mean that it's game time yet. You want to be looking at it in the region of where the entry is. So, now that price is outside of it, the um, I will be looking for a, another candlestick to close in my direction on um, going upwards. And I'll be looking to enter this trade and I'll have my take profit one at here, right? And my take profit two, wherever this red line is, wherever when I enter the trade. And that's pretty much a lock and load for me. Um, this looks like a pretty good trade here. Um, but we're gonna keep continuing. I want to do some back testing so I can see what's happened in the past with these with these kind of strategies. Um, questions, comments, concerns. Is anybody getting any value out of this call tonight? Are you getting some value out of this call tonight? Let me get a three in the chat box just to see if anybody, did, you know what I mean? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? I want you guys to start learning this. Uh, and again, this is for you guys to practice. If you have no, if you've never practiced with the Harmonic Scanner before, practice all week in your demo account and do exactly what I said. Use the twin trading strategy. Um, I guys, I trade with about 5% of my account, uh, maybe 10% tops. And um, can, I, can, say, can I explain my TP reference to the red line? The red line is just the middle of the Bollinger Band. So when it busts out, it's like a, not a slingshot, it was like a bow and arrow, like, you know what I mean, or something like, you know what I mean, when it busts out and goes back in, I'm expecting it to hit the um, the red line. That's just, that's just um, how I use the indicator. What is my specific trading plan? Um, at times, I trade more than I want to. My goal, if I can get, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm trading with standards. So uh, I'm trying to get 50 pips, $500 a day, and I'm done. Well, how I get it, um, I can get it in a multitude of ways. I've been able to use all the IML products. I love the web analyzer too, um, is the Bollinger Band with the cloud. No, the cloud Bollinger Bands are not the cloud. Um, but I, I, I um, my own trading plan, I have a daily pit goal that I'm shooting for on a daily basis. And then sometimes, like, I can look at the scanner at any point in time of the day, though, and catch at least one or two, like, good trades. And with a two-to-one um, pip to loss ratio, it's, it's like, what am I risking? Am I risking $100 to make $200? I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that with, based on the analysis that I had, if I have all the confirmations that I'm looking for, that's not a bad trade. This trade right here is looking to line up to, to be a good one, to be honest with y'all. But again, because it looks good, I'm not entering it until I see a blue candle in my direction that's closed inside this Bollinger Band. And then I'm going to ride it up to this TP right here. And I'm going to ride it up to, the, uh, to the, the red line, and I'm good to go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Keep looking. Let me go to one on H chart. I want to see a sell. I can see what it looks like going the other way. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sheesh. Oh, yeah, that news that came out last week. Yeah, this was all some news at the end of the week. Remember, when, if y'all really trading, y'all would have known EU dropped last week. And if EU's dropping, UCAD is going up. So this is UCAD on the H1, okay? Now, your RSI is in a pretty good spot. It's right at 70. This is a sell. So I'm looking for it right at 70. The stochastic is above 75. So for a sell, you want your stochastic above 75. For RSI, you want it above 70. And you're waiting for price to break outside of the um, the Bollinger Band. You see, it's right at the entry point right now, around this point. If I was looking at this, guys, this happened. If you're looking at this right here, yes, price at this moment right here, my mouse is broke out and then closed in. That was on a Friday. I don't trade on Fridays. So I wouldn't have been looking to jump into any trade on a harmonic scanner on the H1 on a Friday because – a trade might take 15, 20 candlesticks on the hour chart. That's 15 to 20 hours. I'm not looking to hold a trade from the harmonic scanner over the weekend. I'm looking to be in and out. So, no, I would not have entered at this point. So, I would have been waiting for price to maybe bust out this Bollinger Band and then close red going down in my favor to take this thing to the red line or TP1. 
But you can see, guys, it's not really a good range on what's going on yet. The Bollinger Band will let you know how the range is. The range is showing you how much the market is pretty much willing to move. And because it's so small right now, it's just not really a perfect, perfect time to trade. Again, it's Sunday night. So, like, the, the prime times to trade, guys, is, like, really Tuesday to Thursday through our New York and London sessions when the markets are really, really moving. So um, I know it's we're accustomed because we're human beings. We've been taught to go to work, go to work, go to work. So we think that we should be trading every day with the same mentality of us going to work. And that's just not the case. I'd rather come up on all the trades I need on Tuesday and Wednesday and be done for the week than Sunday take loss, Monday take loss, Tuesday win, Wednesday win, Thursday, Friday losses. I'd rather than take the trades I need that I'm looking for during those times when the markets are really, really volatile than be fishing for trades. Um, so that, that's just my own strategy. But you can see I'm, I'm waiting for that. Once this pops out of here guys here's because it looks like it's going down right now it does not mean it's about to go drop down to, to tp3 that's not what that means i'm patient you've seen this thing's been playing around playing around playing around i'm not confident that right now this thing's going to make its move down no i want to see it go out of this bollinger band and then close inside of it and i'm not getting in it until i see it and if i don't see it i don't see it again i'd rather if it drops to tp3 right now cool wonderful and if you guys took that risk you came up there are going to be times where you take that risk though and it doesn't work out that way I'm not doing that. I've lost a lot of money in the markets. I made money too, big money, but I've lost a lot of money as well. So I've lost money by being impatient and just thinking that because, oh, well, it's at the entry point and take profit once here and stop losses here. Let me jump in the trade right now. I'm cool. I've done that a lot of times and, I, and I've taken a lot of L's. So I'm, I'm trying to prevent y'all from taking some of the losses that I did. I just want to share with y'all some of my knowledge and just try to just help him help out as many people as we can. Like this goal is just to have people financially free. We weren't here to go to jobs that we don't like. We weren't here to do things that we don't like to do. I want to give people the power to be able to live the lifestyle that you want to live that God gave you to live. So I'm just trying to give out some value. Um, let's see if we can find another one. ACAD. Let's see what you're looking like, ACAD. Oh, I think you already cleared that one. My bad, my bad. I forgot. Find another one. Did we look at this one already? Nope. Okay, look. Okay, the market's opened at 5 o'clock here. I'm, I'm in Philly again, so I'm on Eastern time. The market's opened at 5. So the market opened with a gap. Guys, gaps are dangerous times to be trading. I'm not really looking to trade um, a, a pair that really just got out of a gap. This is a 15-minute chart on a Sunday at 5. Guys, right now, I wouldn't even really be trading right now. So I'm like right at this moment, I'm not looking for active trades. I'm just showing you guys some back testing. okay? Uh, so I'm not really – I wouldn't enter this trade just off the strength of the market's just opened up. There are some people who like to trade gaps. So they would have bought it right here and caught a couple pips right here. And listen, I ain't mad at you. Get your money. But I'm not, I'm a sniper, guys. I'm not shooting at anything because I give up my position. I don't want to do that because I'm using 5 to 10% of my account twin trading. So I'm, I'm putting a lot more at risk per trade. So I'm not trying to, to have six or seven different trades open at, at 1%. I want one or two trades that I'm confident in and, and going where I want to go. So you're just developing that patience and, and trying to get that accuracy up. It's not even about the quantity of trades. It's about the quality and the accuracy of what you're doing. Um, when you're taking swipe trades and stuff like that, guys, yeah, definitely use 1% of your account because you don't like, you're not even looking at these people's signals. You're just taking them and, and going. Um, let's see if we can find another one though. AUD, NZD on the H1. Uh, guys, type your questions in the chat. We got about 10 more minutes. So I want to make sure I get enough value. Um, I mean, honestly, let's look at a shark. Let's just see so I can show you why I may or may not like sharks. And I, a shark is the most common pattern too. So that's why I used to get caught up in them all the time. Sheesh. Yeah, that would have been good money. All right, let's see. Let's take a look. So, again, some news came out last week. So, that's why you see when you see drops for straight down with no pullbacks, that pretty much means that news or something, something happened. Like, you know what I mean? The market doesn't just move and straight up and straight down um, movements on any chart, on any of the time frames. You'll see, like, it, it doesn't just it doesn't work that way. So, it usually, the it always, market always has pullbacks. So, if you see something like that, you're expecting news. And let's get this out of here. But look, I'll show you why I don't like sharks because stuff like this. All right, so I told y'all, we're waiting for price to bust outside the Bollinger Band. So here, it came out of the Bollinger Band. Boom, you want to enter the trade when price breaks back in and closes inside of it. So me using the strategy, price was below 30, price is below 25. I would have entered the trade right here. Boom, it went up, it fixed you out. And then it always retests with a shark. It always does. So yes, you could potentially wait for that to happen and then try to time the retest. You can easily do that. But it just makes it a, another step that you have to worry about. And it did eventually go hit the take profit one and take profit two. 
But this situation right here with this drawdown, if you're over leveraging your account, you don't want to see all that red. So it's, and this is on the hour chart. So these are a little bit more pips. So sharks are always known to retest. And that retest is what I don't like because it'll match up your confirmation. It look like a great trade. And you can be going your direction. Like right here, you're in the blue. It's 15, 20 pips. Everything's good. You balling. And then, whoa, hey, whoa, what happened? Now you're back in the red and then you're a little upset. And then, you know, man, it takes time for it to grow all the way up back up to, to your TP. So I, I'm not necessarily looking. Let's see if I can find a trade on Trader's Way. Um, shoot your questions in the chat box, guys. Just making sure I get some good value. Um, again, I'm going to record. The, it is recorded. And I'm going to send it to uh, – I'm going to put it on YouTube and send it to Camille so that way she can um, send it out to you guys. Uh, let's look at UJ. Let's see what's up, UJ. Another one of my favorite pairs. I like yen pairs. Yen pairs, they move. Um, okay, this would be an example of an old trade. Why is it an old trade? Because – zoom in. Price burst outside the Bollinger Band. Boom. It closed inside of it. Boom. It came down, hit the TPs. I'm, I'm done. I'm not even like, I'm not even worrying about this trade. I'm not saying that this isn't going to come down and hit TP3. It easily could. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying that what I'm looking for for my personal confirmations for more of a short term strategy, once it goes down and hits these TPs, I'm really not even looking at it anymore. So I'm on to the next one. And the faster you can acknowledge what's a bad trade in your head and get on to the next one, the better you are. It's when you try to start convincing yourself that this is the trade. Well, it came back up to the entry point, and now I'm looking for, like, you know what I mean? Now you're going into it. Now this thing might keep going up. It could drop back down all the way down here to 109, like 196. It could easily do that. But I'm like, you got to come to the conclusion with your style and how you're going to move. And that way, it'll be easier for you to continue. There's so many traders in IML, and there's nobody to say anybody, like, anybody's strategy is bad. What works for you works for you. But you need to know that you can't try to do your strategy, mix in his strategy, her strategy, and be listening to all these different people once you've already decided on how you're going to trade. Once you decide on how you're going to trade, that is what it is, and, and keep moving forward. Now, you can listen to other people and try other styles out, but I don't let that interfere with something that's already working for me. Um, let's see. A lot of the same trades on here now. Um, market's just open, so it ain't like a whole lot of good, good money on here. Um, yeah, we're looking at basically some of the same pairs. Let's see. I like the EN. Uh, all right, whatever. We can look at another shark. Got nothing else to do. Got a good 10 more minutes. Anybody got any questions? So let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so the H1, again, guys, I don't trade charts, so I would not enter this. I just want to look at it so you can see. Um, if you were to use a strategy on a shark pattern, though, uh, you see price is bursting out of the Bollinger Band. You'll be waiting to see price close inside of it. You already got your RSI and your stochastic. Checking your indicators takes literally 10 seconds. I can look at a chart in 10 seconds and see, is it out the Bollinger Band? Is it at or below 30? Is it at or below 25? Seconds. That literally takes no time. So then I can then go to my next point of analysis to be looking for where I'll be potentially entering. Because this is a shark, I'm expecting it to show me something in my way, fake me out, boom, double enter, um, retest at the same line, and then and then go up and hit the take profits. I just don't necessarily like waiting for it. Uh, let's see if you can find it. One, I want to find one more good one. Um, I want to shout out to, to Mr. Tim Holloman, though. Uh, he, he did a really good job on his training. I just wish it was a little longer and could have gave us some more uh, more trades. Like You know what I mean? I, I want to see it. Like The thing for me, I like to see it live. So I want to see, uh, I just want to give all some value. Uh, let's see what GN's talking about. We look at this already. And a lot of guys, a lot of times the brokers are giving out the same pairs. So like it, um, as different as it is uh, for each broker, but it's not really a, um, you're going to be looking at a lot of the same, same pairs. Now. Now, it's a butterfly on the 15 minute. At this point in time right here, I would have definitely entered this trade right here um, because you see prices burst out of your Bollinger Band. You got to close inside of it. Your RSI was at above 70. Your stochastic's right here. Boom. And at this moment, you probably be in a little bit of red. But, guys, a little bit of red. Ain't gonna, if you can't deal with some, some a trade and drawdown, you shouldn't be trading. You should be all right. But like You want to be able to um, – you got to deal with that. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you lose trades. I'm not saying this strategy is perfect. Ain't no strategy perfect. But – this allows you to understand what's going on and to know how much, like how much money um, you're going to win or lose per each trade. You guys really need to know how to count pips and understand your lot size per pips. Like you need to know that a point one is a dollar per pip. So I'm about to win a 30 pip trade. That's 30 bucks. Am I willing to risk $15 to win 30? Yes or no. 
and that way you can trade on that um, kind of a style. I know some traders that use a lot bigger stop losses because they're really, really confident, but I like to cut my losses short and to maximize my wins. So that way I'm able to, to, to profit the most, okay? Um, if anybody doesn't have any questions, I want to wrap this thing up because I want to get prepared for Austin Godsey's um, Millionaire Mentorship, guys. I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited. But does anybody have any questions? Um, I'm going to allow you guys to speak if anybody wants anything, ask me anything specifically. Uh, he says, does harmonic scanner entry and TP reset every 15 minutes? No, it does not reset. Um, somebody says, so to recap, use two accounts. No, I use the same account with two trades. Um, she said, can you repeat the number to buy and a sell? Um, I'm going to send you guys a recording. I said it a thousand times, but a buy is below 30 or below 20, below 30 on the RSI, below 25 on the, um, what's it called? Below 25 on the stochastic. Uh, when will I be on again? Um, I, I don't know, but I'll send you the uh, recording so that way you guys can understand it. I'll make sure Miss um, Camille puts that out for everybody. Um, questions, comments, concerns. Thank y'all very much. This is definitely the largest training that I've ever hosted. We had about 100 people on here the entire time. Oh, this was dope. Um, I'm hoping that everybody really got some value out of this thing. Again, if you got some value out of this call, let me get a four in the chat box. If you got some value out of this call, can I get a four in the chat box before we get out of here? Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. I want you guys all making money this week, all right? So make sure you're using these strategies and being confident and understanding that you're in control of your trades and that, that – um, that this is all on you. So we're going to really, really make this thing happen. All right. Um, I'm excited. Thank you guys for getting on the call. I hope you guys, I'll make sure the recording gets out, send it to your teams. Let's get this money.